One, I'm mm -hmm. told that there is this thing called space time mm -hmm. in which the dimensions of space, the three dimensions mm -hmm. that we know, mm -hmm. and time are somehow unified as one thing. This seems absurd. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it looks very strange because the spatial dimensions are things where you can move in, you can move backwards and forwards, uh -huh. while time you can only move forwards, <laughs> you cannot go travel back in time and so on. And so why is it that physicists talk about uh, space-time? Uh -huh. Well, the reason is that our perception of time depends on how we are moving. So if you are just sitting still and I'm traveling at some constant velocity relative to you, my perception of time will be different than yours. And this looks strange, it looks counterintuitive, but this is the way the world works. Uh, if, if, if this looks intuitive, it's because you haven't understood it. Uh, <laughs> and so you can take two clocks, two identical clocks, and then move them relative to each other, and they would measure different times. Um, so it's a fundamental way about how things work. And, and this has been proven. Yeah, this has been proven. This is, uh, this is the way nature works. So this is very dramatic for particles that are moving very fast. So if a particle that lives uh, at rest, lives for, I don't know, one second. If you move it very, very fast, it lives for much longer. Mm. Uh, so it's a dramatic effect for particles that are moving very fast. Um, but yeah, this is uh, very well tested. And, uh, and that's how nature works. It's not, it's not intuitive. It, really, this is something mm -hmm. that if you just see it and you try to imagine, well, I will try to deduce relativity from, uh, from logic <laughs> only, you, you will not get it. <laughs> it's not intuitive. But uh, once uh, you are told and you're, uh, you understand. And you see it confirmed by many people. You see it confirmed, and, and then you develop this new intuition. This, uh, or you, you, you have to understand, you have to study it and think enough about it to, <laughs> to, to understand the new rules. OK, so on the new rules, we have space time as yeah. one concept. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, how then can, can we then enrich this? How has mm -hmm. uh, a physicist begun to uh, see more uh, mm -hmm. substance? So more sub well, the, I think one of the most important ideas is the idea that space-time is not a static concept. It's not some background where particles move. Yeah. It's not a stage where actors move, mm -hmm. like uh, the particles are the actors that are talking, and the stage is fixed. The stage is not fixed. The actors modify the stage. Uh, and so space-time is modified by particles. So when you have a heavy particle, it curves space-time. So space-time can be curved. Uh, if you shake a particle, it will emit a wave of space-time. So if, if space-time is a somewhat strange concept, a wave of space-time is also very strange. <laughs> but, well, this theory is of general relativity is called, it's a theory of gravity. It's also tested in many situations, and um, we believe it's basically right. And so now we have space-time being uh, 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 relates to, to matter, and that right. uh, matter curves space-time, and right. space-time mm -hmm. gives matter its, uh, it, it, its yeah. gravity. Yeah, it, it, gives, it gives matter the space in which it yeah. moves. Yeah. So the, the, where the matter moves uh, depends on what the matter is doing right. because it curves space. And it's just telling us how matter can move. Matter can move in this curved space-time. And so matter follows the shortest uh, sort of trajectories in the curved space-time. No. So we see the, the Earth moving around the Sun. Right, and right. That's not the shortest direction in space to go between two points uh, opposite to the Sun, for example. Right. But it's the shortest direction in space-time once we include time in the game. Ah. So uh, <laughs> it's counterintuitive, but uh, that's like this on is the Earth, way it if works. we go over the North Pole, it's the, the right. The, that's the, the great shortest circle direction in space, the shortest, even though right. on a on a two-dimensional map it would not. Look yeah, like it would not look like the shortest. Right, right, absolutely, right, right. yeah, it's, that's it's the a, same yeah, thing. Yeah, that's right. So uh, how has this concept of space-time enabled us to understand the universe? Uh, the, the cosmology, the beginning right, of the universe. Right, right. So um, a fundamental fact is the universe is expanding. So this is the most uh, fundamental fact of cosmology. And this is possible because space-time is dynamic. So we needed this theory of dynamic space-time. Uh, and so once you put the constant, roughly constant matter density, then the universe has to expand. Mm -hmm. uh, and the expansion of the universe uh, also tells us that the universe was hotter in the past. And, um, so particles were excited at higher energies and so on in the past. Um, and things that happen at short distances in the past make an imprint on long distances in the universe. So this expansion of the universe also unifies the small distances with the large distances. So it's a very important 
Vakuum cosmology. How has the latest theories in physics, particularly mm -hmm. string theory, mm -hmm. affected our understanding of space-time? Well, perhaps one of the interesting aspects is that um, in the traditional, let's say, view, you have matter uh, on one hand and space-time on another, and they are completely different. So, uh, matter is the thing that moves in space-time, mm -hmm. and while you're on there, and you have space-time, um, which is which you describe in a purely geometric way through the, its geometry and the fact that it's curved and so on. Um, but string theory sort of implies a unification between space and time. So small ripples of space-time, which is the graviton, quantum of, um, of gravity, um, is the same thing as a quantum of matter, so as, an, let's say, an electron. And both are described in terms of a single object, a string. So the string oscillating in different ways could be a quantum of space-time or a quantum of matter. So we're saying yeah. then that you can actually unify not just space and time, which is weird enough, right, right. but now you're unifying space-time yeah. with, with matter? With matter, yeah. yeah. That's the idea, that uh, the two things are basically related in string theory and are the same thing, a and, and the same underlying thing. So, so the same thing manifests itself right. in two separate ways? Right. One right. is space-time, through the graviton, which is the yeah. the, 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 the quanta, the, the, yeah, the, the, quantum the, the bit, of, uh, the quantum of, 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 uh, gravity. of, of gravity in space-time, and the other is the, the mm. in, a photon or the other... Or the, or the, right, uh, or the of, electron. Of, yeah. of, of, in, in matter. Yeah, exactly. So the, but, but they're related to the same thing. Yeah, the, the underlying physical reality of both is the same. It's this oscillating strain. And what, that's one of the beautiful aspects of string theory, that it unifies space-time with matter. And so what we imagine space-time to be uh, is so totally different from what the ultimate reality truly is. Yeah, it could be if uh, string theory is right, <laughs> <laughs> which hopefully it is. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting that, and it's very important for this to have quantum mechanics, because some particles have fundamental quantum laws, and, mm -hmm. uh, and you need to do this in the context of a quantum mechanical theory. And that, that reflects itself not just in matter, which we normally think about right. quantum mechanics, right. but also respects also in space, in space time. time. Right, right. In order to describe the very early universe, you need this uh, unification between matter and gravity, because the expansion of the universe can create matter, can create particles, mm -hmm. and you need to describe both uh, in a common language. Yeah. And string theory is certainly a very strong candidate to be this unification, right, but what right. you're saying is that no matter what, you need to yeah, be unified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it's string theory or something else, they have to be unified. Yeah, they have to be put in a consistent framework. Uh -huh. uh, that's the minimal logical <laughs> requirement. Sure, um, sure. String theory does it in addition to putting, putting it in a unified framework, uh -huh. so describing both things in the same underlying cause. But yeah, actually, actually, Einstein said uh, many years ago that uh, his equations, the left-hand side of his equations were beautiful, and that was the side of the equations that talked about space-time. Uh, the equations say that the curvature of space-time is equal to the matter density, roughly speaking. Right. So the left-hand side was very beautiful, but the right-hand side is not very beautiful. It's <laughs> ugly, he said. <laughs> and that's because it, well, it had to do with the details of matter and, yeah. uh, and so on, and it didn't have a geometric description. Uh -huh. But in string theory, both sides are the same. They, they are both described as strings. And both beautiful. Yeah, and both beautiful, mm -hmm. ge new geometry string theory. We just don't know if it's right yet. We don't know whether it's right. Yeah. But something that, whatever will unify it, right. will probably have the elements of simplicity and beauty. That's our hope. That, that has been uh, the lesson of history, if you wish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it looks like a good guiding principle.